In this video, I'm going to be going over 20 different Photopea tips and tricks. You guys really loved my Photopea tutorial, and I thought I would make a more in-depth video where I can teach you things such as how to remove the background from your photos, how to edit text from photos, how to create GIFs, 3D photos, and much, much more. Now, I know I haven't uploaded in a couple of months, and I'm really, really sorry for that. I've had a couple of stomach issues and haven't been able to make videos, but now that I'm feeling a lot better, I'm really excited to start uploading again. Now, if you guys want to see more photo P videos or photo editing videos, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. And with that being said, let's get started. So the first tip I want to quickly cover is that Photopea can open a bunch of different files, such as Photoshop files, Illustrator files, Adobe XD files, and all the ones you see down here. And to open them, all you have to do is go to File Open and open that file type. So for example, if I open up a Photoshop file, you can see it shows up on Photopea and even the layers and the different effects added to each layer transfer over. So I can basically use Photoshop Photopea as a Photoshop alternative, except Photopea is free and online. You can also use Photopea to easily remove the background of different images for free. So all you wanna do is add the image you wanna remove the background for, right click on the layer, convert the image to a smart object, right click again, and then click on rasterize. And then over here, you want to go to the magic wand tool. You can press W to get to it, or you can go here and go ahead and click on magic wand. And then you wanna just select the background, which in this case is this white background and press on the delete key and the background is gone. And I can do the same thing over here for the part inside of the water bottle. I can click delete again. And there we go, we now have a transparent background. And to save this as a transparent file, all you have to do is go to File, Export As, and PNG. And when you save this image, it's actually going to keep the background removed. Next, I'm going to be showing you how to easily align different elements in Photopea. So to align things, all you have to do is select the layers you want to align, and you can hold Shift to select multiple layers like so. So I can go ahead and click on this first layer, Shift click on this last layer, and all three um, elements are selected and I can use the align tools over here. So for example, if I want to bring everything to the left side, I can click on align left edges. If I want to bring everything to the middle and, and align it horizontally, I would click on this one like so. And similarly, I can also align the top edges and the bottom edges with these buttons over here. Now what's really cool as well is you can also align and have equal gaps. And to do so, you use these buttons over here. So for example, if I wanted to have equal horizontal gaps, I can click this button over here and then I can top align everything. And within a few clicks, everything is symmetrical and aligned. Similarly, you can also use Photopea to stitch different photos together if you wanted to create, for example, a panorama, which I think is super cool. So once you add all of the images you want to stitch together, all you have to do is click on each individual layer, right click, convert the layer to a smart object, right click again and rasterize the layer. And I'm just going to do this really quickly for the second one as well. And then to stitch it, you wanna click on the bottom layer, click on shift and click on the last layer. So in this case, I only have two images, but it'll select all of the layers and then go to edit. And then over here, click on auto align and it will auto align your photos. Now you can also turn this into one layer and blend together the lighting as well by going to edit and then auto blend. And now it's going to turn it into one image. Now, if you want to remove the rough edges, you can of course crop the actual image like so. Or what you can do is use the eraser tool to erase it. But as you can see, it stitched together the two photos. Another nifty trick is learning how to clip different photos. So say you wanted to create text that actually doesn't have a certain color, but the photo is the color of the text or the photo is takes the background of the text. And if that doesn't make sense, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So I've added this photo of a sunset, created a new layer, and then I'm going to create some text. So for example, I can create Ziovo like so, and I'm just going to make it really large like so, and I'm going to move it over here. Now, if I want this sunset background to, to become the background of the actual text, all I have to do is take the text and move it below the photo background. Then I go to the layer with the actual photo, I right click on it, and then I click on clipping mask. And as you can see now, the Ziovo text 
is taking on the background of the sunset. And you can use this to create really cool banners or other types of, you know, creatives. Photo P can also be used to remove different blemishes and imperfections. Now, I think everyone's beautiful just the way they are, but you can use this feature if you want to. And all you have to do is go over here and go to the spot healing brush tool. And then you're going to click on Alt and click on the part of the skin that doesn't have the blemish to get the baseline. So I'm gonna press Alt and click over here to get that color. And then what I can just do is I can just drag over the blemish like so. And as you can see, it removes the blemishes and takes the color and consistency of the skin that we defined earlier. So I'm just going to make this a little bit larger so you guys can see it. And if I go over like so, it's going to take a few seconds, but you can see that it removes the blemishes from this person's face. So this is a really nifty tool that you can use if you're editing portraits. You can also use this same tool to remove text from different photos. So if I go to this file over here, you can see it says right over me and I can't actually move this text because it's a part of the photo, but say I wanted to remove this text and write something over it, even though it's one layer, I can once again use the spot healing brush tool, go ahead, click on alt and click on the grass to define the baseline layer. And then just make this brush a little bit smaller, well, maybe 42, and then just drag the cursor over this text with this tool. And now it's replaced the text with this layer um, and this grass pattern. Now say I took this beautiful picture and I don't want anyone to use it unless they purchase the rights to it. I can actually create a repeating watermark in PhotoP really, really easily. So all you want to do is go ahead and add in your watermark. And if you don't have a watermark, you can also use text. So I'm just going to make this Z and I'm just going to rotate it a little bit and make it a little bit larger, like so. I think this is a good watermark to have. And then what I can do is rasterize the layer. So you wanna right click on the layer, convert to smart object, right click on the layer, rasterize. Then you can go to filter, other, which is right over here and click on repeat. And as you can see, it's already repeated everywhere. But you can also adjust settings such as the scale. So I'm going to just make it a little bit larger. You can change how much the rows have each um, element shift over as well. And then of course you can adjust the spacing like so. And once you're happy with your watermark, you can click on okay. And then what I can do is go to the opacity of this layer and lower it down. And my watermark is all over this image and nobody can take it. Next, I want to cover all the different effects you can access through blending options. And I did cover blending options in the full tutorial, but I think it's really important to cover here as well. So all you wanna do is pick a layer you wanna add a bunch of effects to, right click on the layer and go to blending options. And here you can do a ton of different things. For example, I can add a stroke to my text like so, and then edit the type of stroke. So for example, say I wanted to add a black stroke, I can just do that. And then I can position it on either the inside, the center, or the outside. So I'm going to put it in the center. You can also do things such as add a color overlay, which is something I do really, op uh, really often if I wanna easily just make you know a background darker or quickly change the color of a text. Now, one other feature that I use a lot is the gradient overlay to make the text shiny. So for example, you can go to gradient overlay, you can have the default black to white gradient selected, or you can even edit it by clicking on it and then double clicking on these markers and changing the colors and then dragging these markers to change the strength of each color in the gradient and click okay. But I just use the default black and white one. And if you just change the opacity to anywhere between 10 to 20%, your text has this really nice shine. And another blending option that I'll quickly go over is the drop shadow. So if you wanna select drop shadow, you can actually add a shadow to your text. And usually I like to keep the opacity around 60 to 70 and you can move the different spreads and sizes and it adds a nice shadow to your text, which really, really makes it pop, especially in thumbnails. Now, even though PhotoP is an online tool, you can add custom fonts to PhotoP really, really easily. And so first you wanna find the font that you want to add. And I like to use the font to find a bunch of different fonts and whatever file you download, you wanna make sure there's either an OTF file or a TTF file. So for example, if I open up this one, there's both the OTF and the TTF. And once you have the font that you want to add, all you have to do is go to file, open, 
And then what you can do is you can just open the actual, you know, font file, and it's going to ask you if you want to add it to the local storage. You click OK, and the font has been loaded. And then if I go into the text tool and I scroll to the bottom, the font should actually be right there. So for example, I just installed Power Breakfast and it's right here. And then I can just type with this custom font like so, and it's been added to Photopea. Similarly, you can also create custom shapes in Photopea if you know just a square or circle won't suffice. So for example, I could actually create a shape that mimics this Apple logo. And to do that, I just need to go over here into the pen tool or press P. You want to make sure shape is selected and then you can choose your fill and your stroke. Now, usually when I'm creating something like this, I wanna make the opacity of the layer a bit lower just so I can see the layer underneath, which in this case is the Apple logo. And once I'm done, I'll put it back to 100. And basically to use the pen tool, all you have to do is click to create different points like so, and the points connect together. Now, if you wanna create curves, all you have to do is click and hold like so, and then drag while you're still clicked down and then let go. Now, one thing you'll notice is that if you click again, the curve will automatically follow through. So what I usually do is I'll click and drag and create my first curve. And then I'll click on the Alt key, click on this middle point over here to remove the anchor. And the next point will also start off straight and I can customize the curve again, which I find is easiest um, to use when creating custom shapes. And so to apply this for the Apple logo, I can start over here at this point, and then I can click in the middle over here, drag to match the logo. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down so I can see underneath. Then I'm gonna press Alt and click on the middle to remove the anchor point. Then I'm going to click over here and create another curve that matches like so. And of course, this is a very rough job. Click Alt again, and I can just trace the entire image like so. So as you can see with the pen tool and just the pen tool, I was able to recreate the Apple logo. I can just also increase the opacity. And this took about a minute or two, which is super, super nifty. Now you can also use Photopea to create GIFs, which is amazing. And to create GIFs, all you have to do is have your background layer and then add whatever elements you want animated. Now, what you have to make sure is you know where each frame is going to go. And in this case, I'm going to make a GIF of an eagle flying over these mountains. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and name this, you know, bird. And then what you want to do is for each frame you want animated, you want to make sure the layer has underscore a underscore before the actual name of the layer, like so. And then I'm going to create a layer of the bird for each frame that I want. So I'm just going to go ahead, right click, duplicate layer, right click, duplicate layer. And now I have three bird layers. And of course you want the first frame at the bottom and each additional frame on top. And then I'm going to move these frames around. So the middle frame, I want the bird to be over here like so. Uh, and I'm going to just also make sure that the bird is tilted a little bit like that. And then the third layer, I want the bird over here. So it's kind of just flying over. Um, it's not the best GIF, but it'll get the job done. And so now we have our different frames. They're properly named as well. And in terms of the animation speed, the default frame duration is 100 milliseconds. But if you want to change it, you can also go into the layer, um, double click on the layer name, add a comma and add the duration of the frame as well. So for example, if I, if I want to make it 125 milliseconds, I would do comma 125 like so, but I'm just going to keep it at 100. So once you have all of your animation layers ready, you want to just select them all by holding shift. Then you want to go to layer, go to animation and click on make frames. And it's going to create your frames like so. And now what you can do is go to file. You can go to export as and export it as a GIF. And as you can see, the animation is now created. And here you can also change the speed if you wanted to. Uh, and then you can click save and your GIF is ready to go. You can also use Photopea to create 3D photos, which is super cool. Now, 3D photos can be used on platforms such as Facebook if you wanna make it your banner. And to make a 3D photo, essentially what you have to do is create a depth map. And so to create your depth map, all you have to do is import the photo that you want to make 3D. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually just duplicate the layer. And we're going to use the second layer to create the depth map. 
And basically the way it works is we're going to make everything grayscale and the darker, um, the darker the shade of gray, the further away that part of the image is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool. You can also use the brush tool. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off with the darkest parts and we are going to go ahead and fill them in right here like so. And then what I want to do is I want to bring the clouds a little bit further up. And so I'm going to make it the clouds a lighter shade of gray like so. Click on OK. And then I can just click on the clouds like so to make them a lighter shade. And then the mountains are a little bit more further up. So I'm going to make that an even lighter shade of gray. Click OK and just do the mountains like so and make sure I get everything. So now our depth layer is complete and I used a mix of the paint bucket tool as well as the brush tool to fill everything in. Now, once you have this layer made, you want to go to window, more, and then click on 3D depth viewer. And then what you want to do is you want to click on the eye icon to remove the depth layer and then click on load color and the color is going to load. And then you want to select the depth layer so it shows again and then click on load depth and it's going to properly load the depth of your image like so. So as you can see, based on the depth map we made, we now have this 3D photo of the landscape. Now to save this, all you want to do is save the background image as its own file and then save the depth layer as its own file as well. Now, when you download both of your images, you wanna make sure they have the same file name, but the depth photo also has underscore depth at the end of it, and then you can click okay. And then once you have both of those photos saved, you can upload them onto Facebook together and it's going to create your 3D photo. Next, I wanna go over a few shortcuts that will make editing in Photopea a lot easier. So the first one I wanna go over is the ruler. So if you press control R, you can actually have a ruler show up. And then what you can do is click on the ruler and drag out to create different guidelines. So this is really useful if you wanna edit and have to make sure that, that like different elements are aligned um, if they're not the same element, or if you wanna you know, space out everything evenly or have certain distances between your files, you can use the rulers. And to get rid of the ruler or to edit a ruler line, all you have to do is click on control and then you can use that to move the rulers that you've already added and you can get rid of them like so. You can also access the ruler, grid, and much, much more by pressing Control K. And here you can enable or disable the grid and enable or disable the guides and edit your preferences within the menu. You can also use different shortcuts to navigate the document a lot more quickly. So for example, if you hold Alt and use your scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out really quickly like so. If you press Control and you use your scroll wheel, you can scroll horizontally. If you hold space, you get the hand tool. And while you're holding space, you can easily move around freely like so. And then if you wanna zoom in quickly, you can press control space and then the zoom tool comes up and you can click to zoom in. Now, once you have this zoom cursor selected, you can also right click and zoom out or you can click fit the area or control zero to get to fit the area and the document will become the perfect size for your monitor. So these shortcuts are really helpful for navigating around PhotoP. Another useful shortcut is knowing how to get to the free transform tool really quickly. So all you have to do is press Alt, Control, T, and the free transform tool will be applied to whichever layer is selected. And then you can freely change the shape and the perspective like so. And the last shortcut I want to go over really quickly is copying different layers. So if you have a layer selected that you wanna copy, instead of right clicking over here, you can just alt click on the object and it will create copies for each time you click. So as you can see, I've just created a bunch of different copies. And finally, a lot of what I've covered as well as a bunch of additional tips can also be found on the Photop website, which is super useful. So if you go on photop.com and go to learn or tutorials, you're going to find a bunch of different tips on how you can take your Photop game to the next level. And I think it's super awesome that the creator of Photop also created this. So it's definitely a resource you want to check out. But that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.